Hi guys, welcome back. We're ready for chapter 9 now, and this first section is all about solving right triangles. Hopefully you remember SOKATOA and everything that that stands for. Sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. If we are given enough information, we can solve for anything that we have not been given. And in this case, the information that you need to have is either two sides of a right triangle or one angle besides the 90 degrees and one side. I'm not sure if you know this or not, but capital letters are used for angles and lowercase letters are used for sides and the letters will match. So for instance, when it says B equals 21 and it's a little b, it means that it is opposite angle B. So you see opposite the B is the little b there. And same for the C and for the A. So here we've been given two sides, B and C. And if you're not given a drawing, you will want to make your own drawing. And C is the right angle, and so the hypotenuse is the 29. Now using the Pythagorean theorem, you can solve for that third side. So that's not really trig, that's just something you can do. So here we would have an unknown a, so a squared plus b squared, and b is 21, is equal to c squared, 29. Now I'm gonna pull up a calculator. It actually does work out very nicely. It gives us a whole number this time. It doesn't always, uh, but 29 squared is 841, and 21 squared, I believe, is 441, yes. So if you subtract that, you get a squared equals 400, and the square root of 400 is 20. So let me get rid of the calculator for now. So this third side is 20. From that, we can find the angles. So you've got all three sides. You can use any of the three, sine, cosine, or tangent, whatever your preference for that. Uh, I'm just going to say sine of A. So sine of A is equal to the opposite, so 20, over 29. And so actually I need that calculator back because now we need to do the inverse sine of 20 over 29. So second sine of 20 over 29. And that's going to give us about 43.6. So that's this angle. And then because the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees, you could just subtract that from 90 because we already have accounted for 90 here uh, to get angle B. But instead, I'm actually going to do another trig problem, and then we can. it'll serve as a check also. So we need to find angle B, and we can use that same 20, or we can use the 21 that we were given. And it's usually safer to use the ones that you're given, although I didn't do that here. I used the 20 that we solved for. Um, so even that's an even better reason to do the B as a check and not just subtract from 90. Um, so let's do the sine then of B, and that would then be 21 over 29. So we'll do inverse sine of 21 over 29, and that is 46.4. So 46.4, and those, if you do add them together, would give you 90, and so we can do that kind of as a check too. <clears throat> All right, let's do some class exercises and then I do have another example for you that is a little bit more complicated. Um, so here in the first part they ask you to match basically the ratios and so for sine we need to find the one that says opposite over hypotenuse. For cosine, we need to find the one that says adjacent over hypotenuse. For tangent, we need the opposite over adjacent. 
And then cotangent, they listed next. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, and so then we would want that to be the adjacent over opposite. Uh, secant is the reciprocal of cosine, and so we would want that one to be the hypotenuse over adjacent. And then cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so hypotenuse over opposite. Next, we're given a diagram that has only letters in it. The angles are alpha and beta here, and the sides are x, y, z. And they want us to express the sine, cosine, and tangent of alpha in terms of x, y, and z. So the sine of alpha would be x over z. The cosine of alpha would be y over z. And the tangent of alpha would be x over y. Um, then they want you to do the same thing for beta. So the sine of beta would be y over z. The cosine of beta would be x over z. And the tangent of beta would be y over x. And then you can use those for part C that says tell whether each of the following statements is true or false. And the first one says the sine of alpha is equal to the cosine of beta. Well, the sine of alpha and the cosine of beta are the same. So you can say yes to that first one or true. Uh, then tangent of alpha is equal to the cotangent of beta, and we don't have the cotangent of beta listed, but it's the reciprocal of the tangent. So if you flip these, it would be the same thing, x over y. So that one's true. Then secant of alpha, again, we don't have the secant listed, but it would be the reciprocal of the cosine, so we're looking for z over y. Is that the same as the cosecant of beta? And again, we don't have cosecant, but we flip the sign, and so that would be z over y. So that one is also true. Um, down here I'm going to do some of these with you and then ask you to do the rest. Uh, we'll do A and D for number 5. So here we have different triangles drawn and we need to set up something that will allow us to have x. And so we have a 50 degree angle over here and this side is the side that's opposite that, and then this one is the hypotenuse. So we have to use those bits of information to set something up. So since you have the opposite and the hypotenuse, that tells you to use sine. So you wanna say sine of 50 is equal to x over 10. And then since they asked for two using the reciprocal, you can just flip that then to use the cosecant. So sine of 50 is x over 10, cosecant would be 10 over x. Now when you look at letter D, that's not a right triangle, but we can make right triangles because that's isosceles. So if we just draw a line down the middle, we know it's gonna be perpendicular there, that makes a right triangle. You could solve for this angle because 70 needs a 20 to add up to 90. The six is going to be bisected, so you know this little piece is gonna be three. So we have a 20, we can use the three and the x, or we can use the 70 and use the three and the x. So if, you, if we use the 70, the three is the adjacent and the x is the hypotenuse. So that means we need to use cosine. So cosine of 70 would be three over x. And then if you flip that, you would use the secant. Uh, for number six, now we're looking for the angles and they've given us then two sides. We could solve for the third side, but we don't have to. We can just use whichever ratio is gonna go with the two sides that are given. So for letter A, you have a theta and you have the opposite and you have the adjacent. So that means you're gonna use tangent. So tangent of theta would be three over two and then you can flip it to get the reciprocal. For 6b, our theta is here, and this again is the hypotenuse, but this time it's adjacent. So then we're gonna say cosine of theta is equal to five over eight. And then you can use the reciprocal there to do secant. Um, right now, 
please pause the video and try 5b and c and 6c and d and then I'll reveal those answers. Okay, hopefully these are what you got. And then I have one more example down here that takes things a little bit further. You have to remember some geometry when it comes to some of these story problems. It says a rhombus has a perimeter of 40 centimeters and a 70 degree angle and asks for the lengths of the diagonals. So rhombuses have four sides that are all the same. So if it has a perimeter of 40, that means each of these is 10. And also in rhombuses, the diagonals are perpendicular. So these are all right angles in there. You don't have to draw them all in, but you can if you'd like. So we have our right triangles there and we have the hypotenuse of it. And we're looking for then essentially X and Y because you could double it because the diagonals are bisected as well. Now when they tell you the 70 degree angle, every rhombus is going to have two acute and two obtuse angles, unless of course it's actually a square where they're all right angles, which this is not, we have a 70 degree angle. So these angles are actually bisected also. So this is a 35 and this would be a 35. And so now you have everything that you need to know in order to solve that. You have a right triangle with one side and one angle. So you can use the sine of 35 degrees which would be equal to x over 10. And you can solve for x that way. So the sine of 35 is 0.57357. And then you're going to multiply that by 10. You're going to cross multiply. So times 10 gives you 5.74 for x which means that that entire diagonal would be double that. So 11.47. And then you can do something very similar for y. We'll use the cosine though this time. Cosine of 35 would be y over 10. So then when you cross multiply, you need to take the cosine of 35 and then multiply it by 10. And so y is 8.19. And if you double that, the other diagonal would be 16.38. And you should always try to label too. If you're given units, then use those units. So those would each be centimeters. Okay, that's all for this time. Until next time, have a great day.